Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in Algebra 2. And today we're going to be talking about solving systems of equations when there are three variables. So the last lesson we just focused in on uh, systems that had two variables, which should have been a review of Algebra 1 skills. Now we're going to get into something a little bit more advanced where we throw in an extra variable to solve this. So for the first example, you're going to see these two equations, 2x plus 3y minus z. Notice in both of these equations, we have an x, a y, and a z. So this is a lot more difficult to solve because, and actually, you can't solve this equation. The only way you could, or this system, I should say, the only way you can solve this system is if we have one more equation. So go ahead and write this equation in. With three equations, you can solve a system that has three different variables. So th that's kind of a hint for you to know that if you had, uh, this isn't part of solving it, but if you had four variables like A, B, C, D, then you would need four equations in order to solve it. Five variables would require five equations. Okay, so then that gets really time consuming and more complicated. That's when we start using some technology with computers and, and graphing calculators that'll help us. Uh, but for today's lesson, we're gonna focus on just the algebra skills of how to solve this thing. So uh, you're gonna see as I do this, there are a lot of ways you could approach this. Okay, so the way I'm going to show you is not the only way you could solve this system. Um, there are some strategies though. So as I look at this, I'm tr I need to make one of the variables cancel. I need to get the y's to disappear, the x's to dis disappear, or the z's. One of those needs to happen. So as I look at the system, oops, sorry, update available. Okay, yeah, get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so as we uh, as we look at this system, you know how we could use uh, elimination by just adding the two equations up? Well, so if I took these two equations right here and I added them together, then you'd end up with 5x plus 3y, and then the z's would cancel. So all I would have left is equals 11. All right, so that's the first one. The second one, let's see, I could take, uh, I could take these, the first one, equation A and equation C, the first and third. If I took these two and added them up, this negative z and this positive z would also cancel. So what would we do here? We'd have, uh, let me get rid of those. Those look like minus signs. Let me get rid of that. So first and third, if we add those together, 2x plus an x is going to give me 3x. The 3y plus 4y gives me plus 7y. And then the z's will cancel because I have a minus z and a positive z. And then that will equal 17. Okay, so now that you've got this set up, now we can solve this just like we did in our last lesson. Uh, solving a system of equations. So I'm gonna speed this part of the video up. You could slow it down if you need to be able to see what I'm doing because this is just a review of the last lesson. So I'm going to multiply this one by a negative five, which means I have to multiply by a negative five on the right side. And I'm gonna multiply the second equation by a negative three. That's gonna get my x's to cancel. So I gotta multiply the right side by negative three. Okay, so then I'm gonna rewrite this as negative 15x minus 35y equals, oh shoot, big number, 17 times negative five. Grab my calculator or do this in my head. Negative 50, negative 85. All right, now I do negative three times five. That's a Oh, made a mistake. I shouldn't have done one of them. Shouldn't have been negative. Oops. Let's just do positive there. Because I need them to be opposites, right? There, that's better. Okay, so positive 15x, positive 9y equals 33. Okay, now that I have opposites here, I can go ahead and add those together. And that'll cancel. Those will be gone. Those are gone. These add up together to give me a negative 26y equals... These add up together to give me a negative 52. So if I divide both sides by negative 26, I get y equals 2. All right, so now I know what y equals. Now I need to figure out what x equals. So if you know y, I can go back up to any of these equations. It wouldn't make sense to plug it into one of these because I have an x and a z there. So let's take one of these equations and plug it in there. How about the second one? The numbers are a little smaller. So I'm going to start working over here now. So I'm going to say 5x plus 3 times 2 because right there the y value is what y equals 2 and then equals 11. And then we get uh, 5x. This is a 6 so I can subtract 6 from both sides and get 5. So x will equal 1. Okay, so this was the review part where we solved the system of equations. I chose to use elimination, but you also could have used substitution if you wanted. Although substitution would have given you some crazy fractions. I don't think I would have liked that. Okay, now we know a, a y value, we know an x value, and you have these equations. You can use any one of these equations. Just plug in the x and the y, solve for z. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this third equation there since the z is positive. So that x is a one, plug that in, plus four times the two, the y is a 2 plus the z equals 12 so now this is 8 so 8 plus 1 is 9 plus z equals 12 so z will equal 3 so here's how we write our answer it is a coordinate point of 1 comma 2 comma 3 
there is our answer. You see, we can write these as in the form x comma y comma z. That's kind of weird, huh? You, uh, I don't think we've done this at all before. Most of you will probably not have seen this. This is a three-dimensional graph. We are not graphing these in this lesson. Thank goodness. You'll probably get more into graphing them. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do that later this year, or we might wait till pre-calc to cover that. But just so you know, this is kind of cool. This is what it looks like. So this is a three-dimensional grid where the x-axis is now coming off the screen like towards us. The y value would be right, the z value would be up and down. So if we were to graph these things, then we would go out here to a 1, because remember we're doing the coordinate point, what was it again? 1, 2, 3? Yeah, 1, 2, 3. So we'd go x value of 1 right here, then we'd have a y value of 2, and then we'd go way up here, 1, 2, 3, a 3 value, uh, x value of z, I should say, z value of 3. So it would be out here in space, this is where we'd put our dot in three-dimensional space. That is the coordinate point x, uh, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3. Okay, again, you don't have to know how to graph it, but that's what it would mean graphically. So number two, let's do this one now. So uh, what's the best strategy here? Here, I, I gave you the third equation here. You need three equations. Um, we could use substitution. It's not a bad idea because here you don't have a y value. Um, but since we're already missing a y, let's go ahead and see if we could make the y disappear from these two equations. Is that possible if we add those? The only way that's going to be possible is if I first multiply this last equation by a 2. Can you see that? Because then I'd have a positive 2 here and a negative 2 there. Okay, so again, this is can be pretty complicated. The hardest thing about this is just trying to decide where to start. So I'm going to go with getting rid of these y values. So in, after you write this down, now we're going to change it by multiplying both sides by 2. So I'll multiply this side by 2. So that will now give me a new equation of 2x minus 2 y minus 2z equals 4. So now let's combine the first equation with this last equation. If we add those together, x plus, what am I doing? x plus 2x is 3x. And then the 2y minus 2y cancels. That was the whole idea. We can get those y's to be gone. Negative z minus 2z is a negative 3z. And then 8 plus a 4 is going to equal 12. And then the other equation was x plus z equals 4. So I just rewrote the second equation. Okay, now I could use substitution if I or elimination if I wanted, and you could solve this. So this is the part of the video I'm going to speed up since we've practiced this part so much in the last lesson. So here we go. I'm going to try substitution this, this time. So I'm going to say that uh, in this case, x would equal 4 minus z. And so then if I take this 4 minus z and plug it into that x right there, I'll end up with three times, so the x is going to be 4 minus z, and then we have a minus 3z equals 12, so 12 minus 3z minus 3z equals 12, subtract the 12 over, let's combine these, I have a negative 6z equals, subtract the 12, we get 0, so z would equal 0, there's our z, now what's x going to be, we can get that one from right here, so my x is going to just equal 4 minus 0, since z is 0, so x is going to equal 4. Uh, what else do we need now? Now we need to know a y, how about, you can take any of these, uh, we need to solve for y. How about this one right here? The original equation right there. x minus y minus z. So x would be a 4. y, we don't know. z, we said was 0. And then that equals 2. So then we have, let's subtract the 4 from both sides. On the left, we still have a negative y. On the right, we'll now have a negative 2. So y, it would equal 2. So our solution is x is a 4 y is a 2, and z is a 0. So you can see on this one I used substitution. I could have used elimination. You can do a, a you know, kind of a, a mixture of both of them depending on how you want to solve it. All right, number three. I'm going to let you try this one on your own. First, uh, I need to show you what the third equation is. So there's the third equation, x equals negative z. So pause this video now, and I'll have the answer appear. You can see if you get the same thing as me. All right, here's the answer I came up with. I've got a negative 4, negative 8, comma 4 for my, my uh, three variables. If you can follow what I did, I chose to use substitution. I said since x equals negative z, I just plugged in 
negative z into where there was an x in this first equation because then you simplify that and all you have is y's and z's so I knew that y equaled negative 2z then I went over here and I took the second equation and I did the same thing plugged in a negative z in here to that x right there so that was where my negative z came from simplified that a little bit and then right here this is I know it's kind of confusing to follow this along when you don't see me do it as I go but that negative 2z is coming from this since I knew that y equaled negative 2z, I could substitute it in for that y right there. Then once you know what one variable is, so if once I knew that z equaled 4, I can just start going back in and plugging in a z equals 4. Wherever I see a z, it could become a 4 into any equation along the way, anywhere that I have things. So I chose this one because that was real simple, figuring out the y. And then I chose this one because x equals negative z, so x has got to equal negative 4. All right, hopefully that makes sense for you. Last type of problem you're going to be faced with. These are cool problems. I really like these. So this is when you're given some type of an equation. In this case, it's a parabola. It's a quadratic function. And you're going to be given some different coordinate points. And we've got to figure out what this a, b, and c are. So what parabola, what quadratic equation uh, would give us a parabola that's going through these three points? So here's how we do that. We just plug in the 1 and the 6. So the y value is going to be, this y value is going to be 6. Equal, oh, let's change to a different color. There we go. So we're going to have a and then x squared is just going to be 1 squared plus, and then we have b times the x, which is a 1, plus c. Okay, now let's go to the next one. The next coordinate point is 320. So the y value is a 20, a times 3 squared plus b times x, so it's b times the x value of 3, plus c. And then the last one, plug in the negative 2, 15. So we have 15 equals a times, and now here's the negative 2, so we're going to go x value is a negative 2 being squared, plus the b times, what's the x value? Negative 2 again, and plus the c. All right, so what happens now is that this system of equa- or excuse me, these equations here, let's simplify them up a bit. So 6 equals a plus b plus c. All right, now the, the next equation, 20 equals, 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to have 9a. Uh, b times 3 is plus 3b, and then the c, plus c. All right, last one. 15 equals negative 2 squared is 4, so I'll have a 4a. And then this is going to be a minus 2b plus c. Okay, what we have now is a system of equations. We have three variables, a, b, and c. And you have three equations. So with three variables and three equations, we can solve this system. So I'm going to put this on fast mode so you can see me solve this pretty quickly. Go ahead and try and copy down what I'm doing as well or try and solve it on your own and then watch me do it, however you want to do it. But let's get going on solving this. Again, you might use a different strategy than I, which is fine. If you use substitution, elimination, it just kind of depends. I'm going to take this first equation and multiply both sides by a negative 1. Multiply this side by a negative 1 because then what that gives me is I will now have negative 6 equals negative a minus b minus c. Okay, so now I can combine these two. If I add those together, I'm going to end up with, I'm going to write this down here, uh, 20 and minus 6 is 14 equals 9a minus a is 8a. 3b minus b is plus 2b. And then the plus C and the minus C cancel. All right, good. So we've got that one done. Now let's do these two. If we combine these two together and add them up, this C and that minus C will cancel as well, which will be good. Then we only have two variables. So 15 minus 6 is 9 equals 8, uh, whoops, not 80, 4A. 4A and the negative A is 3A. And then the negative 2B minus another B is negative 3 b. Okay, so now we're going to solve this. So you could use substitution. Uh, you know, substitution actually might be kind of an easy way of doing this because I can see stuff's going to simplify. How about that? Let's do uh, 
let's uh, add 3B to both sides on this one. So if I add a 3B there and add a 3B here, we get 9 plus 3B equals 3A. Divide everything by 3 and you get 3 plus B equals A. All right, so that's what A equals. Now I could substitute it into this equation. I could plug it into this one right there. Let's plug it into that A. So now I'll have, uh, that's going to be give me 14 equals 8 times, what was A? A equaled 3 plus B, 3 plus a B, and then what's left? Plus 2B. Plus 2B. Solve this out. What are we going to get here? 14 equals 18, 16, 24, plus 8B, plus 2B. Subtract 24, I get negative 10 equals 8B plus 2B is 10B. And then we get that B has to equal negative 1. All right, we've got B. That'll make it really easy to get the A. So we'll come back over here. If B is negative 1, 3 minus 1 means that A has to equal 2. All right, and what is going to be the C? We, let's use this original one. 6 equals A, which is 2, plus B, which is a minus 1, plus C. So 6 equals 1 plus C, subtract 1, 5 equals C. All right, so we know A, B, and C. So what do you put for your answer? Whew, that was a lot of work. You have to come back up here and look A, B, and C. We want an equation in this form, this standard form of that function. So our final answer will be Y equals the A is a 2, X squared, and then the B was a negative 1, so we say minus X, and then the C is a 5, so we say plus Five. All right, there is our answer to this. So what does that mean? That means that this graph, if we were to graph this parabola, it would go through these three points. So without, as long as you had points, enough points, you can figure out what the exact equation is using this type of a system. Okay, pretty cool trick, uh, which is very useful for a lot of things that you'll see as we keep progressing through mathematics in high school. All right, this is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that master check, and I'll see you back here in the next lesson.